Uh, it looks like the industry, thankfully, the people, thankfully, hopefully escaped uh, the worst of it. What are you hearing? Do you expect most of these refineries to be back online in the next day or two, assuming they get power back? I doubt it's going to be that quick. Uh, hopefully, a matter of weeks, you know, ra rather than months. Uh, in the vast majority of cases, we can go back to some of the uh, strongest hurricanes. You know, usually there would be, you know, at least a couple facilities that take, you know, longer than, you know, two three weeks to, you know, fully restart. But you know, by the middle of September, I, I suspect things will be substantially back to normal. You are exactly right. The key question mark is the trajectory of restoring electricity. Without that, nothing's going to work. If, and we had a hurricane, a Category 4, just a year ago, Hurricane Laura. It hit Louisiana fast. It hit Louisiana hard. Parts of Texas certainly as well. Very similar to Ida. But it was a different economy then. It was still a lot of the country was kind of closed up, more on lockdown. The fall surge was beginning in the Northeast. Now we've got an economy that is attempting to open back up. Gasoline demand has soared. Everybody is on the roads and getting on a plane. So any prolonged shutdown, Pavel, now could have a far bigger impact, I imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, than last year, despite very similar circumstances. Well, here's the good news. Nothing in the oil market happens in isolation. The fuel market fundamentally is global. You know, it's it was 100 million barrels a day pre-COVID, less than that today. Refineries around the world have spare capacity. If there is some prolonged refinery outage in, in Louisiana, then the solution will be for the U.S. temporarily to import more fuel from places like Rotterdam, Singapore, et cetera. That capacity is available, so there's not going to be any widespread systemic gasoline shortages. Obviously, it will take time for the supply chain to adapt, but you'd be surprised how quickly uh, the trade links can evolve based on these kinds of natural disasters. Again, we've seen this with yeah. her, you know, everything from you know, Harvey, uh, Rita, going back to the days of Katrina. And, and I do know for a fact that there already have been charters, maybe not made, but inquired about, about bringing gasoline from Europe to the East Coast of the United States. Very quickly, Pavel, we've also got an OPEC meeting on Wednesday. And the OPEC meetings have been kind of rote, and they've done these now, moved to these monthly virtual meetings. At some point, they've announced they're going to add, and of course, had the fight with the UAE, is now the time do you think they're going to continue to add more barrels to the market? Or do you believe that they're going to sit tight, kind of wait and see where demand goes through the fall and the winter to make sure we don't get another surge, potentially more slowdowns in the economy? Well, OPEC is very worried about Delta, and, and it should be. Uh, there is today more than 500 million people worldwide still in lockdown. About 90% of that 500 million are in Asia. So OPEC is watching very closely what's happening in uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, e even China to some degree. And we know that OPEC has a roadmap for normalizing supply by September of 2022. You know, the situation today with, with Delta is you know, somewhat better than it was when they last you know, modified the, this, this plan about 60 days ago. Uh, so all else being yeah. equal, yeah. the most logical thing is just to keep uh, implementing what they've already agreed upon. That's the most rational step right now. And that is most likely what, according to my OPEC sources, is what's going to happen. But it is OPEC, so you never actually know. Price of oil, just under 70 bucks. Pavel Molchanov, Pavel, thank you for staying.